The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Broadcasting live from the Toscano Cigar Soundstage in Salem, New Hampshire, USA. And broadcasting around the world, this is The Cigar Authority. Transmitting since 2010, The Cigar Authority is the longest-lasting cigar podcast ever. Grab a cigar and light them up, light them up, light them up. This is The Cigar Authority. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Saturday, August 14th, 2021. Unquestionably, one of the biggest names in the cigar industry, Rocky Patel, joins us today. We'll find out about his journey, how he got there, and we, what the future holds for Rocky Patel in the future. Welcome, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority, now in its 12th year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. And you catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog at thecigarauthority.com. Just before the show starts, Rocky Patel says, hey, do we advertise on this show? Yes, you do. <laughs> and, thank, and thank you for that. Uh, yeah, you're not paying attention to these uh, minor details. You're a busy man. Well, I'm proud to be here. I'll tell you what, you guys do such an amazing job. And uh, starting with the opening bell. Uh, I mean, yeah. I love you, Dave. It's, it's, it's amazing. You, you, you just shock me at how good you are at uh. so many different things. Forget marketing. Forget retail. I mean, you are the man. And, and, and this is so great that we're lucky in the cigar business to have people like yourself to, to promote this artisan cottage industry uh, that we call handmade cigars. So um, happy to be here. It's been a fun three days. We've had a yes. great time. Uh, you know, I haven't been on the road uh, with COVID and sure. uh, really, really enjoyed myself here. And uh, what a beautiful dinner we had last night. Yeah. And then um, hanging out and seeing the customers and uh, just meeting all the people that work here and the passion that you guys have to promote cigars that, is special. That is our industry. It, it's passion. You, with as the uh, brand owner, cigar manufacturer now, and retailers that are passionate about it, and if that ends up happening, you saw what happened with the people that were here. Yeah. It, it goes out there, and the next thing you know, it's contagious, which is great. Are the two of you going to kiss each other's ass for the <laughs> entire <laughs> show? Was it, was it awesome last well, night? Well, I mean, I haven't, awesome. seen, him, I haven't awesome. seen him in such yeah. a long time, and I just admire him. He's like a big teddy bear. You it's been hug 10 him. hours. But, uh, <laughs> but it, no, you know, when you work so hard to make a great quality cigar, and you see it on the other side, the relationship of somebody who's passionate about how to promote and sell all cigars, not only just mine, but it, it, we love that because he, he really, I've never been to an event where the owner comes every single day to every single shop to make sure he's present. I, I respect that. Dave was there. He was there before I got there. He was there the whole event. And, and that is special. It's an hour drive between each shop and you know, the fact that you're engaged after all these years, involved, still care about how you sell the cigars. The shops are beautiful. They're elegant. They're clean. You're, you, you're always thinking forward about how to promote and sell cigars. We're giving away Rolex. Yes. That's pretty cool. Uh, but the, the, you, know, you, you always take the leap of faith of doing something outside the box, and that's what you got to do in this and, business. And the softer what? side of the Cigar Authority is brought to you by Rocky Patel Cigars. <laughs> And I, I listen, I, and I learned from the better manufacturers there. I was a kid getting into the cigar business. We were, we were all in our 20s and 30s when this yeah. whole voyage started. And as it went on, how do we learn? Nobody was here before. We learned from other people and, and the work ethic that somebody else does. I thought I was working really hard till I met you. And then I see, oh, my God. And you made me step up. It's just like playing basketball with great basketball players or golf with great golfers. You get better when you hang around in the right people. All right, I want to light up, Barry. What are we going to smoke? Well, today's first cigar is the Rocky Patel Decade, which is manufactured <laughs> in Honduras by Rocky Patel. The size that we're lighting up is a 5 by 50 Robusto, and it features an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper over Nicaraguan binders and fillers. It is part of the Cigar Authority Care Package, and a single will set you back $11.29, while a box of 20 is $199.99, which comes out to just $10 per cigar. 
That's a savings of almost $26 or 11% off the box price from TwoGuysCigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, try TwoGuysCigars.com. That's the number two, GuysCigars.com. Aesthetically beautiful 10-year anniversary. That was 15, 16 years ago. It was, it was. <laughs> time is fly. We're going to get into some of that in a second, but it's time to cut a cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo, the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. And since we have no Glenn today, Pam scores all of the points. There we go. Okay. So let me tell you a little secret about this cigar. Yeah. We did say that's all Nicaraguan, and you know, I hate to disclose the blends all the time to Cigar Aficionado because sometimes you want to keep the propriety of the brands. So the actual filler, so this is, you're right, it's a Sumatra wrapper from Ecuador, um, they happened to change the Sumatra wrapper in Ecuador because they were having issues with black shank and blue mold. And we stuck with the original seed and we changed suppliers because they changed the seed on us. So it does have the actual original original Sumatra. It's got that sweetness. But the filler is 50% Hamastron from the Hamastron Valley in Honduras, which gives that nice sweetness to yeah. it. And then the other 50% is Panamanian tobacco. Which I heard which you mention. I never heard that before last night. And we night. used that in the edge. And for years, we kept it a secret ah. because it's hard to get it. There's not too many people who grow it. And it just has a unique flavor profile than any other cigar. And the edge has it, and so does Decky. Never would have known. Never, never knew it. Probably never tasted it by itself anyway. Like, yeah. who uses Panamanian? Nobody that yeah. I know. And uh, I wish I could get my hands on more. If yeah. you were eating, well, now you just told good. everybody. If yeah. you were eating raisins. Raisins, absolutely. In the basement. Yeah. Cold draw, all raisins, which is what manufacturers try to do. They try to get that plummy, raisiny type of sweetness to happen in there. And there it is on the cold draw, no doubt about it. What do you get in Panamanian? Go ahead. You light it. Go ahead. Yeah. We're going to light our cigar today with the Drone by Vertigo. The Drone by Vertigo features single action, two jets, Fueled by the patented Vertigo big-ass tank. At the bottom, you have easy adjustment, a flip-out bullet punch, and a fuel window, all for the low price of $19.99. That's the drone by Vertigo. So how do you end up getting, you know, nobody's using Panama tobacco. Some guy says to you, we grow tobacco. Here, try this. Yeah, so basically what happened is that the Placentias got sent some Panamanian tobacco. And they asked me to try it. And I said, uh, it's a Panamanian, really. And now I've tried Peruvian, I've tried Canadian, I've tried a lot of different stuff, and most of it is not that good. And we actually made a blend down there when we had a bunch of consumers because we lay out all the different tobaccos on the table and we let people make blends. And I go, what's this? Panamanian, where did that come from? And I actually made a blend with it and I go, wow, this is good. And uh, we passed it around to everybody. They're like, wow, this is amazing. And then I played around with the 25%, 30%, 40%, 50%. And we made a blend with 50% Hamastron, 50% Panamanian, Mexican binder, used the um, Sumatra wrapper, then I used a Costa Rican Maduro wrapper. We were talking about Costa yeah. Rica, where your cigars come from. Yeah. And um, just played Corojo wrapper and played around with it. And then we came out the Corojo blend and the Maduro blend. And hence, The Edge was born. And uh, it's been one of our best-selling sure. cigars, great cigars. And now we can't get enough Panamanian because there's individual farmers that grow the tobacco there. They're not, like, big. They're not organized. They don't have a lot of money. But there's, like, about six or seven of them. And no more than a combination of, like, 85, 90 acres. And so, basically, we have a deal with them. Everything you grow will buy. But now with the big boom and the demand, yeah. we need more of that. And so, unfortunately, you can't get it. So it's limited to those two, two blends, the edge and the decade. All right. And, and what's the to taste profile that I taste? So I, I, toasty I, nuts. I, yeah. I, you pulled it right out. You, I was just going to say, <laughs> it tastes like nuts. It's like a mix of almonds. I nuts, can't say it tastes like nuts because I got these two jackasses <laughs> that would jump all over that. So yeah. I have to add the extra uh, toasty, toasty nuts. an expert on nuts. <laughs> so you got the sweetness and you got the nuttiness. And that's, uh, that's exactly, he nailed it on the head. All right, so that's where it comes from there. Yep, yep. All right. All right, so let, let's go back uh, in the day. Rakesh Patel, 
Rocky Patel, where, where does that come from? Who, who started that? So I, that name stuck in high school. Okay. Uh, we were all in Manhattan. First time I'd ever been to New York. It was a high school trip to Manhattan, and uh, the movie Rocky came out. Oh, wow. And uh, I guess I bought one of the Rocky shirts, and I had it on, and then ever since, everyone called me Rocky instead of Rakesh. All right. And so that 76. name stuck. Okay. 1976. Yeah. 74, I started high school. Was 76 with the All trip. right. Absolutely, yeah. Rocky. Two uh, years before I was born, just so everybody can date everybody that's on the stage. So we are going to, without you, smoke a special cigar in the next hour. Yep. And it is the Rocky Patel 60 to celebrate your 60th birthday. And here you are. Um, Better show me some respect. I'm there over. we go. Well, <laughs> I'm on we, it. We had it last night. I got a lot to say about it when we get to it. But uh, here you are. You, you come to America. You go through college. You become an attorney. So you had to go through regular college and law school. Not just a regular attorney, successful attorney. And then you said... I think I'll get into the... I scrap that. That was a mistake. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get into the cigar business. How does that happen? Well, I mean, it, it wasn't that simple, right? So I was practicing law, and um, a, a private cigar lounge called the Grand Havana Room opened up down the street from my office in Beverly Hills, and I joined as one of the founding members, and we'd go there and smoke cigars and hang out. And uh, years later, a young man by the name of Phil Zangi approached me, and he, he was... Starting a brand, he was already making some cigars in Honduras. It was called Indian Tobacco, and supposedly had the license from Indian Motorcycle Company, um, which we found out later he didn't, and they sued me, and uh, I had to pay $250,000. No. So I started out as a small investor to help him out. Pretty soon I kept writing checks and writing checks and writing checks and got bigger and bigger, and I was getting bigger. the results back. Yeah. Nothing was coming back, and I said, Phil, this is not quite working out the way I visioned. And so I ended up owning the company, and uh, you know, at that time I was working on just trying to get my investment back. And everyone said, "You're never going to get. Just quit while you're ahead. You're not going to get your money back. This is not a business you jump into traditionally. You have to be of Cub Cuban descent. Absolutely. This is a business that's typically passed down through generations. It's an art that you have to learn. Uh, it's not something you just step into." And uh, I went to Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, Honduras, asked a lot of dumb questions, saw what people were doing right, what they were doing wrong. Um, while you're an attorney? Yeah, while I was practicing law okay. in my free time. And I learned about curing tobacco, fermenting the tobacco, the nurseries, the farms, the blends, primings, all that stuff, and spent a lot of time. And I, trust me, I made my share of mistakes the first five, six years. And I had other people making cigars for us. And I had a good palate, so I love to cook. I enjoy cooking. I like fine wine. I like scotch. So I, I, I trusted my palate. And we came up with some very good blends, the Indian Tobacco Super Fuerte, yeah. ahead of its time. Our, the cigars I made were much richer and had a lot more body than what you saw in the market you back were then. You were blending to yourself. I was blending for myself. Because yeah. when you smoked the Avos and the Fonsecas yeah. and you run the Punch and the you know, Macanudos and Davidoffs and everything was mild. This was yeah. way prior to Opus X. Sure. And so I remember giving Lito Gomez one of the Super Fortes back in New York and he goes, you're crazy. This is so strong. And now he's got the double the hero. Double which is right. Like, <laughs> but, and everything's full uh, yeah. body. Um, so, you know, the blends were good, but then the people that were making the cigars for us were taking shortcuts on aging the tobacco, fermenting the tobacco. They changed the binder. The boom was on at that yeah. time, right? So you couldn't get none of regular supplies of good materials. And so the cigars are very, very inconsistent. And yeah, they would sell when I do an event. As soon as I left, people wouldn't buy them because they were inconsistent. So I soon realized that the only way to succeed is to either do this full time take total control of your production, be vertically integrated, have the farms, be able to select the tobacco, cure it, ferment it, age it, and have the strictest quality control standards. And if you don't take control of that entire situation, there's no way you're going to succeed. So I actually got carjacked in uh, L.A., and I was in the hospital for a couple of days in a coma. Oh, and... When I woke up, all I kept saying is, did the Packers win? Did the Packers win? Did the Packers win? I kept repeating it over a couple hundred times. And I was supposed to go to the playoff game that weekend between the Cowboys and the Packers. And that, you know, and I got carjacked right before it. And my parents flew down and said, L.A. is not for you. 
this is not the place we want to see you. You grew up in the Midwest. You need to be somewhere else. And I was tired. I mean, I did the whole L.A. ride. I had the ride. It was, you know, it's like going to ancient Rome, committing all the sins you want, and you get out. Mm. And um, it just wasn't for me. Uh, it was a great experience. But uh, I decided to move to Florida. Naples was a quiet little sleepy town. Uh, nice. Started out in my garage with three employees. And, and, and But... Leaving there, you didn't say I'm going to bring my law practice over there. I'm, no, I, I I'm got out. I, I got burnt out with law. Law was not for me. And the, and your the parents were okay with that. Yeah, then they, they weren't okay with it. They <laughs> thought I was crazy. nuts. Yeah. Yeah. But in the fact that everyone told me I'll never make it and I can't do it, I said I'm going to show these guys. And I saw an Doesn't opportunity. Doesn't sound like anyone I know. Yeah. It's, 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 I saw an opportunity because. There's great cigar makers, the Padron family, the Fuente family. The, I saw the Placentia as well. And I said, you know what? They're great, but there's something missing here. I, I think that we can offer unique packaging. We can create you different sure blends. Did. We you, can you market. You won packaging we can awards go. back no, in the early yeah, days. Yeah, nobody was going on the road. Nobody was building the relationships with the consumers, the retailers. I said, I think there's an opportunity here. I mean, these guys have... You know, they, they have a lot of respect because they came from Cuba. They migrated to Nicaragua, to Honduras. They, they, they know a lot about tobacco, but they're not there presenting. Uh, they're not presenting their work to the consumer. They're not That's probably showing the, the thing that separated you early yeah. on is that you were a road warrior. You were hitting the road. Oh, yeah, Your well, name these, is on the box. These guys were sitting in, in Dominican, Nicaragua, Honduras, and they were great artists, but they weren't communicating. Correct the labor of love of what they do to the consumer. They, you know, people enjoy the products, but people don't see what goes into making a great quality cigar. So and, and I kind of brought it, I kind of brought the two together yeah. and I said, show this passion and this craft and get it out there because it is a craft and it's unique. So, you know, I learned a lot and I wanted to share that with people of how much work really goes into how labor intensive it is. By the time you plant the seed in the ground, the time you get a cigar it takes four to five years. Three hundred yeah. different hands touch it, but nobody knows that. Right, and, and you came in educating, especially the the retail stores that don't educate their yeah. consumer anyway. Uh, going there and um, they'd, you'd show up and they'd have the biggest days yeah. of their life Absolutely. because people got excited. Like we and, said. and Dave, living in L.A., it was all about. Cuba, 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 yeah. right? All those guys, they, they're all stuck up in the, in the Grand Havana, and they all want to smoke Cubans. And it was like about Cuba, Cuba, Cuba. And it wasn't until Carlito and his father came in and introduced Opus X that really brought the non-traditional Cuban cigar and made it special, right? So it's like this craft beers that we have. It's like people think of Bordeaux, 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 and then California came in, and next thing you know, Cabernets, yeah. And then people started respecting the new world. They call them new world wines. Well, that's what we were, the new world cigars. Right. And the new world cigars now are better than the Cubans. And they're seeing that in Europe, right? Yep, absolutely. How, how long did it take from the inception of you being at the helm of the company to realizing how important it was to fight for legislation on premium cigars? So, ironically, what happened is when S-Chip came about and I heard... They're thinking about charging $10 for an S-chip tax on premium cigars. And I was sitting with Jeff Borschwitz in Orlando. I said, I smell a rat. This does not make sense. How could they charge $10 for a children's health care tax and charge premium cigars $10? It, uh, there, there, there's something funny about this that doesn't make sense. And the rest of the tobacco category is getting away with murder, and we're going to pay for it all? There's something unique, and I've never met a congressman or a senator, never was into politics. I mean, yeah, I had my vision about who I want to support, but I certainly didn't know how to even meet them. And I said, we've got to go to Washington. There, there's something weird here that makes no sense. It, it makes no sense. We've got to tell our story. So literally went in the Senate cafeteria, stood by a Coke machine, and waited there to try and engage with somebody, and I saw Senator Harkin from uh, Iowa said, Senator, Senator, please, I need 10 minutes of your time. This is going to be about 300,000 jobs. It's about 2,500 mom-and-pop retail stores. It's going to put us out of business. Nice man brought us into the office, spent about 30 minutes with him. He introduced us to Senator Reid, who's the leader of the Senate. 
And that's how we started telling our stories. And we soon realized that the big corporations that are in the business were promoting this because they wanted to have a tax. They weren't promoting $10, but they were pitching $3. And $3 is still a lot. And so what they wanted to do is make sure that there was a high levy tax so that it would bar all competition. The little guys wouldn't survive. They had the money to pay for it, and they'd wipe out the right. industry and take market share. And without getting into details and names, <laughs> I sat. Still happening today? Pretty, yeah, still happening now. We sat in Senate Finance Committee meetings across from some of these big corporations, and we had built the relationship telling our story about our craft to all these people and the, like guys like Russ Sullivan, who's like the chair of the Senate Finance Committee, and other people kicking me under the table when they're negotiating deals, like, kid, don't take that deal. It's bad for you. Don't take And so you learned about the politics and about scoring how much money they're going to raise and what the machine-made guys were paying versus what we're paying. And they make 14.5 billion units, and at that time we're making 250 million units. So every time you add two cents to their side, it covers like 4 or $5 on our side, right? Yeah. So it was a negotiation, and I was stuck at 12 cents. And unfortunately, at that time, we were rookies into the game. We didn't have enough support from our side. We didn't have support from the retail association, IPCPR at the time. And they threw in the towel at 40 yeah. cents, and we got they stuck with 40 cents. And bullshit. they considered a win bullshit. Uh, yeah, We could have got 12 cents on it, and the cigars would have been much more inexpensive out why there. Why didn't you the kick consumer. someone under the table and tell them to shut uh, up? I try, try. I'm not going to mention names, <laughs> but there were some big hitters sitting across from me, and I said, Guys, was the number to, four? Were they, there four of them they sitting sold across? Out. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, and, and they uh, considered a win, which was the craziest yeah, thing of all. Dumb. At the end of it, um, so that got me fired up, and I realized and this begins that CRA. if you don't have a seat at the table, you can't eat. Yes, and so that's when I started getting the manufacturers organized. I said, "You guys, we have to be relevant in Washington D.C." I had a lot of stones thrown at me. You don't know what you're doing. What the fuck? You know who are you? What are you? you know? I was at the big uh, meeting. It, at the RTDA trade show, and right after the show floor closed, there was a meeting exactly. in a room, and yelling and screaming, yep. and people were like, what are you crazy? And this and they, this became the potting of the sea. You're so dividing that, the industry. Yes. You don't know anything. You just started in the business. What yeah. the fuck? You know, we, you know, people shut storming up. out, yeah, screaming. Storming out. Yeah. We don't need to go to Washington. We have this organization. We have the CAA. They got our back, blah, 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 blah. The big guys know what they're doing. They're smarter than the I said, yeah. trust me, if you oh, they up, may be they're smart. Hit your life. They're, yeah. they're they smart. are smart for <laughs> their smart. side. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, we, the 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 um, family owned and operated cigar manufacturers, the small guys, right, would be out of business if that didn't happen that day. If that decision, it would have been over. I look at it back. It's easy to look to, to play Monday morning quarterback and look at it. If that day didn't happen, we'd all be gone. Yeah. And day. it makes me sick to my stomach how much we fought on that S-chip tax and how these guys threw in the towel. It makes me puke. Yeah. Uh, and and I, the writing was right there, but nobody was there to support me. They didn't see it. They said, oh, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know. I said, I'm there. I'm living it. I'm breathing it. I'm telling you, these guys are going to run us over with a bulldozer. And we didn't have the support. We got out of it. But yeah. now, thank God, we're finally, ex and, and now the family-owned companies are together. They see the vision. They see what's going on with this overreaching FDA regulation that's so egregious that basically would wipe out 70% of our industry. Um, I think we've all woken up to see that you have these health groups that really don't distinguish and separate our handicraft industry and don't separate it from other tobacco products and uh, this is unique we don't have youth access issues kids aren't yeah. smoking cigars you know we're, we're not addicted we don't manipulate the tobacco like cigarette companies we're very very unique and different we're like a craft beer like a single malt scotch like a great bottle of wine just a unique luxury yeah. product it's a it's a money grab for a small minority cigar smokers you know with one out of a thousand people use the product how many people are going to complain about it and a cigar smokers are relaxed people. They're smoking a cigar and they want to relax and they don't want to talk about politics. And I hate to bring it up in the show because our ratings freaking drop when we do it <laughs> because people don't want to hear it. But we have to throw it in there every once in a while because if this stuff doesn't get taken yeah. care of, we're gone.
And you don't know it till after you're gone, but you'll be gone. And the amount of energy and time the FDA spends to regulate us, we make up 0.01% of all tobacco products. 0.01%. Yeah. Yet, the energy and the money they raise from us and what they want us to the spend bulk. will pay for the bulk of everything. Yeah. That's stupid. Yeah, yeah. That they, they come after this little teeny cottage industry. How, uh, th this is a question I've been meaning to ask you. How did the Tucker Carlson interview come about? And for anyone that hasn't seen it, look it up on YouTube. It is the only time you'll see Tucker Car Carlson stood up in an interview and not be able to get a word in edgewise. <laughs> yeah. And that guy's a pro. Yeah. But Rocky stuck it to him. You, you got about 45 seconds, the best elevator pitch we've ever seen. But yeah. how did that come about? How did you get on the show? So that was actually set up between a relationship that Marvin Schenken had, who owns Cigar Aficionado, and Brett Bear. And I met Brett through Marvin Schenken. And then ultimately we started playing some golf and hanging out. And I said to Brett, I said, listen, our, our industry is under attack. Uh, is there any way we can get on Fox and talk about the fact that they're going to destroy small businesses, destroy a culture, a heritage uh, for generations? And he said, listen, I'm a news show. I report on news. I don't do editorials. But let me talk to my friend Tucker who cares about small business, who cares about freedoms uh, and the right and privileges as Americans to enjoy, um, you know, what they like. And so, um, uh, ironically, we sent an email to Tucker and uh, talked about our plight. And sure enough, he called uh -huh. me back. He said, uh, I'll get you on the show soon. And literally, I got, I got a call in two weeks. And Come to D.C., I'm going to put you on the show. And I'm sitting there getting the makeup on and all wow. that, you know, and nervous because he didn't, I had zero prep time with him, zero. It's like they grab you and they say, you're on in 45 seconds. And you get there and you literally get mic'd up and you see the clock winding down. It starts at 15, 12, nothing. There's no interaction. You don't know. Tucker's a tough guy. Sure, You very have no tough. idea. If he which was way. against you. Yeah. Oh, oh, he could have roasted me. And so I said, I know I got a minute and a half, maybe, you know, by the time he introduced me, like I said, 45 seconds, I'm running with this. And uh, if he interrupts me, watch out. But, you yeah. know, but I don't think you took a, a breath. Guy. You <laughs> got the whole sentence all out. Yeah. You, you did this industry proud. Thank you. That was like the most unbelievable. And thing. you're live, so it's nerve wracking, yeah. right? So it's not like I, they're going to edit. <laughs> what, you're live, what you say. And, uh, it was, Very few people uh, could I have pulled started, that off. That uh, the was, first 12 seconds, I was a little nervous, and then I got, <laughs> got into my groove. Wow, that was great. So, family owned and operated. Um, Manufacturers and you know those that don't don't know your brother is in this with you, your cousin yep, Nimish, uh, Nimish yes. has been in I think since the he beginning. was one of my first employees. Okay. I remember so Nimish comes. Nimish was working for a telemarketing uh, company in, in Milwaukee, and I said, "Listen, you know I'm starting this cigar company. Why don't you come work for me?" Out of all people, Nimish shows up the next morning. And he's in a suit and tie. He's staying at my house. He goes, let's go to the office. In a suit and tie. I've never seen Nimish in suit and tie since then, right? And he goes, <laughs> let's, let's go to the office. I go, well, the office is downstairs. He goes, downstairs? I said, yeah, right behind my garage. And so the office was behind my garage. I had two other employees in Nimish, and that's how we started in Venice, California. Wow. He must have said, uh-oh, I made and a I took, mistake. I yeah. took the upstairs bedrooms. I can take the tie off now, right? I took the upstairs bedrooms, and I bought those humidifiers from Sears. Back yeah. then we had Sears. And uh, we humidified the entire room, and that was our humidor. And I'll tell you, the same was Perdomo. The same was Mike Cusano. It was out of right. his house and seeing it. And I got to watch all you guys do this and grow. And it was a motivation for me as I was seeing we're all about the same age and seeing all of us end up moving along. And I was in a different business. I'm in the retail business, but I'd be watching and I'd be like, if, if he works that hard, I can work that hard. I need to get another store going. I need to do this and watch everybody grow as it goes on. Yeah, it's an amazing journey. I mean, I remember all these guys. I remember all the young guys. I mean, you know, uh, we were reminiscing about yes. it yesterday, the, the young Padrones. Uh, I remember when Lido was young. I remember those guys from New Jersey. 
um, uh, what was the cigar we we're talking yeah. about? Uh, Flor de Flores. Yes. Uh, Robert Mondavi had a cigar yes. called Napa. Uh, there were so many guys. Some big could, money guys could, coming in. That yeah, the work. guy from Cupido. There were there were yes. so many brands back then. And then you know mingle it. I knew Pete Johnson from the Grand Havana Room. Right. Pete was working retail there. Remember uh, Stroud was going to take yeah, over the uh, yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, Stroud, Don Tomas. Yeah. Uh, that's the big guys. Yeah, that's when the the big boys stepped in from. Uh, it's called Copenhagen yeah. uh, U.S. Tobacco. Yeah, listen, and, we see uh, Phil Morris come in. We that's how Vintage them. was born. So what happened is they had an empty factory, and I remember when basically all the retailers bonded together and basically blackballed UST because yeah. UST gave the distribution to Southern Wine and Spirits. Yes. And they were putting it in every gas station, liquor store, yeah. everything else. And they had Don Tomas at the time, Austral, great brands. They were yeah. doing well. And the... They got blackballed, and all of a sudden the production went like this, and I think they had like $140 million of tobacco that they bought. So I went into that factory, had a couple of relationships, a guy by the name of Luis Matias that I knew through the Placencia family, and said, listen, I know you've got some really old 10- and 12-year-old wrapper, Sumatra from Ecuador, and you have this broadleaf that you grow um, over in Honduras back in time in Talanga, and uh, I'd like to buy all that tobacco and they said, uh, you can't buy it, Vega, but, Vega but if you make a blend that you like and you allow us to make it, or I say, I can't have you make it because you guys are making too many cigars too fast, but if you let me create a factory within your factory and give me my own section, I get to sort the tobacco, pick the tobacco, age and ferment it the way I want. That was, that was good. You the did, first yeah. blend, vintage 1990 and 92, and I remember this blend by heart now because I made 120 blends, but that was the first blend I made, and it was basically, uh, I had a Talanga wrapper or a Sumatra wrapper, two different brands. I had two binders. It was Mexican San Andres, I had Dominican Olor, Dominican Piloto, one leaf of Brazilian Mata Fita, uh, Fina, um, Lijero from Esteli, and Viso from Jalapa. And that was the blend on the 90. And we smoked 122 blends, and it was the first Fresh blend that one. I made. And that's how we ended up creating the vintage. And they said, you can make it here, you can have control of the factory, and you can have that tobacco. And that's how vintage started. That's the first cigar I put my name on. Is that your, your biggest seller? Uh, the 99 Nine, is Connecticut. A Connecticut. Uh, sure. It used to be 90. Not, it used to be Edge. Ah, right. Edge. And then, so it's Edge, Vintage 99, and then 90. Edge, another interesting one. 100-count trays. Yep. I'm like, boxes of 100. You're out of your mind. Still yeah, to people this thought day. it was crazy. <laughs> and we didn't even have a band on it. We yes. had to start putting a band because people started counterfeiting it, right? Uh, and so they were basically putting other cigars in the Edge 100 counts. And we'd go around stores and go, what the heck's this? So we had to put a band on it. Oh, after, that was the after reason. After two foot, years. Foot band? Foot band, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's how that came. Um, also, uh, big ring gauge cigars, people look at that, and back in the Indian tobacco days, uh, you came out with yeah. big ring gauge cigars on there, yep. uh, colorful packaging. The stuff you see now, there it was in, in 1995, 96. Yeah, we got awards for a lot of yes, that stuff. Yes, you did. I mean, the Cameroon Legend, that box was amazing. I was at a trade show. Your stuff was there. A guy standing next to me and says, look at this. It's, it's cartoonish or whatever it is. I said, I love it. And the guy lo is looking at it, and he goes, oh, everything was brown. Every, every, bands were brown. The, the boxes were brown. I look at it, and my eyes looked at it. For him to even make a, to yeah, he, needed, he should have paid attention and said, holy shit, I'm looking at this. It may, correct. He was looking at it. He was saying something negative to me about it, but he was looking yeah. at it and talking to me about it. I was looking at it because I ended up liking it, and he, he was a no. I was a yes on it. You bought more than he did, so it's I okay. Know. Well, we were always trying to think outside the box, and so my vision was that you know there are a lot of people uh, that have much more knowledge than I do in the industry. They've been born and raised in the industry. They have heritage, uh, tradition. Uh, they're great cigar makers, uh, but I, I, I felt like I can make the quality and great cigars, but why don't we think about marketing outside the box? And I thought that there was a lack of that in the industry yeah. at that time. People weren't marketing experts. They weren't. They were sitting in in their factories in Nicaragua, Honduras. You know, they're. Yeah, I, I look at the big companies. They were basically yeah, farmers. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so. Uh, I thought that there was an opportunity to connect and engage with the consumer in a different level to take this craft 
uh, and showcase it and promote it like the alcohol industry yes. does. And, uh, and so, you know, that's the vision and opportunity that I thought, you know, that was out there for us to engage in. And so, you know, you have to have quality first. Yeah. If you don't have the quality, I don't care what kind of packaging you have. You got to have quality and consistency. And I always tell people, they don't remember the 100 good cigars they smoked, they remember one bad one. So being a handmade product, you have to, it, it, it's very difficult to have that consistency. Uh, you know, in wine, uh, every year the vintage is different, right? You have the same grapes, same vineyard, but Mother Nature plays a big role. So the 97 cab is better than the 2001 or, or better than the 95 because the climate was perfect. Well, the same thing happens with tobacco. Yeah. Uh, when you have too much rainfall, that tobacco that you have from a particular farm is milder than tobacco you have when you have a sunnier season. And so we're always playing with the primings in the plant to try and keep the blend consistent because the consumer... If you get an edge, you want it to be exactly the same. Well, it can't be exactly the same, but we try to make it as close as, close as possible. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, we're smoking the Rocky Pillow Decade. We're going to go to break right now, but when we come back, uh, you heard the past. We're going to go into today and into the future with Rocky Patel and Rocky Patel Cigars. Does he have a 10-year plan of the future? And what about the 10-year plan of the cigar industry? We're live in the Toscano Cigar Soundstage, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. To some, tradition is a catchphrase. To us, it's a guiding light. For there can be no great future without reverence for the past. Hammer and Sickle Tradition Series cigars are handmade, employing only time-honored methods. Meticulously crafted of individually selected tobaccos, Tradition Series is a blend of three-year-aged Dominican Viso and Lijero, all finished inside a breathtaking five-year-aged Connecticut shade wrapper. Tradition Series from Hammer and Sickle. Live well. Romeo y Julieta Reserva Real Nicaragua, the Nicaraguan expression of America's beloved brand, Reserva Real. Reserva Real Nicaragua is a Nicaraguan puro, meticulously blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. The Reserva Real Nicaragua will take Romeo lovers and Romeo novices alike on a journey through premium Nicaraguan tobaccos. Reserva Real Nicaragua. It'll steal your heart again. Surgeon General warning, tobacco smoke increases the risk of lung cancer and heart disease, even in non-smokers. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper. Fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lining up the Diamond Crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar Co. or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that. But there's something else happening here. A natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Kristoff cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Kristoff is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10-count boxes, four sizes including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. 
with over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy. The Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you, the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. This is Nicholas Melillo, a.k.a. Nick Aragua, from Foundation Cigar Company. You're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we are back with smoking Rocky Patel Decade with Rocky Patel himself. How cool is that? Welcome back, everybody. Uh, Rocky Patel, I would guess... Um, the Rocky Patel Company is in the top 10 of all cigar manufacturers in the world? No, yeah, I would say so. You would say so. Maybe Congratulations top five. to you. Top five. Top five. Yeah. Top five. And we know who the big four is. We're up there. Yeah, you, you, you sure are. Um, now, 60 years old, yep. just, just like me. Uh, I'm 61, by the way. I got you by a year. Um, I know the finance guys say to me all the time, they're asking me for my 10-year plan, my succession plan. They're looking for me of my way out. I'm not looking for a way out, but they want it. It must be happening to you. Yeah, so, you know, I, I really, I should look that far out. I worry about tomorrow. Um, I worry about the fear of failure. It's easy to get up here. The fall oh, is, yeah. the fall is, they are, the, how fall, they the fall is steep. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I spend my, from the minute I wake up, I think about um, being more visionary. What am I going to do next? I think uh, our focus now has been, um, we bought this building in Nicaragua uh, where we can store three and a half to four million cigars. Um, recently, our vision is to start making unique, limited cool stuff that we age for two years after it's made. So, for example, the new 60, the age limited and rare, uh, the quarter century. I've had the opportunity to make these cigars and let them sit for two years. We don't go in the humidor and smoke them and say, hey, how's it taste six months later? How's it nine Is months it ready? later? No, we wait how's it 12 months later? How's it 16 months later? No. They're under lock and key. Not me, not Nish, not Nimish, not Amilka. Nobody has the op. We take that risk because the blend is so good. Let's just put it away. And so we're, we're, we're starting to do stuff from pure passion and um, for the love of the art and, uh, and making stuff because at this point it's not about how much you earn. It's about really loving and enjoying yeah. what we do and creating stuff and making other people happy, right? So uh, um, that's our focus. And uh, we're looking to build a new factory in Nicaragua. Uh, we're looking to build a, a, a nice resort villa to have people there. Uh, you know, we have 364 acres now between Esteli and Condega. Wow. Um, so we're waiting for the election to be over. The architecture drawings, everything's ready. Uh, so we're, we're, we're going to be proud to be able to share that passion with consumers, have them down there, uh, see the farms, see the nurseries, see the factories, and, and get involved in blending. And so now it's all about creating fun stuff. And uh, I'm always trying to source tobaccos from unique parts of the world, different stuff, yes, and try I guess it. So. Uh, so that's our journey. What about so. the, we talk about uh, once a year we do a conspiracy theory show where we evaluate the entire cigar industry. We lay all the players out on cards, yep. and we argue about who's going to buy whom and why and when. I, is there a thoughts of Rocky Patel being in the position that you're in of acquiring other brands since we have a finite number of brands at this point? No, be on um, the I've never thought about buying other brands because it's difficult when you have your own portfolio uh, to buy stuff and sell it. I'd rather create things myself 
and uh, be proud of what I'm creating. I don't want to rely on anybody else. There's, I'm not, there's other great cigar makers out there uh, besides uh, myself. Um, but we're, we're, we're focused on our journey. We're focused on what we do. We, we, we care about what we're doing and passionate about it. I don't have the time and energy to, 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 to look at and oversee other people's behavior and, and their quality and what they do. And so that's our focus. Nobody's approached us to buy us. Um, we're not interested in just selling our company to make money. Uh, this is something that uh, you know I started that I'm very proud of, yeah. very passionate about. Uh, I don't have any kids yet. Maybe I will one day. Uh, let's hope. But um, you know, we we enjoy every morning. I walk into the office and I'm proud. I enjoy everybody that works there, from the accounting department to shipping department to every department. Well, everybody that works for us. They weren't a specialist in purchasing. They weren't a specialist in inventory. They weren't a specialist in anything. They had a passion for cigars, and they learned yeah. their position. They, I brought in people that were working in a retail store, and now they're in charge of the entire purchasing for the factory I've, you know, or in marketing. They weren't marketing. They didn't get a degree in marketing. So... Listen, you took a bus driver, your bus driver, and turned him into a cigar manufacturer. Right? Yeah, well, I, I love, I, I love that. Oscar is a great guy. He didn't drink, he didn't speak English or smoke, and in about Oscar a year, I, I, Oscar Valdez leave by Oscar, and I corrupted him, and pretty soon, you know, uh, we had the. He was an amazing bus driver when we brought people down tours at the factory. <laughs> He'd be driving the bus and entertaining people. And I said, "Well, the rainy season, we don't have any people down there. What are we going to do? I, I can't lose you." So we put him in the factory in charge of quality control. Pretty soon, he started selling cigars in Roatan, which is the island in Honduras and all over Honduras, and then Caribbean and all over the place. And then I made him private label and started selling that. And now he started his, his own factory. Yeah, very successful, great guy. Hats off to him. Don't you wish that he worked for you when he came up with the idea of putting a leaf on the outside <laughs> of the cigar instead of cellophane? Yeah, or would you well, look at that and say, that's gimmicky, that's crazy, it's not going to work? I'm not going to comment on yeah. that. But, you know, <laughs> uh, but, you know, hats off. I mean, he's, he's a good cigar maker. He's a great guy. And, um, you know, the funniest thing he says is, uh, you know, because now he finally speaks English. He goes, my English is not very good looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember at the trade show, Jonathan... Uh, saw that saw that leaf by Oscar first brought it over to me and says Dave what do you think of this and I said oh my god that's unbelievable we got to buy it. he said I already did I knew you would love this I'm into the gimmicky stuff anyway and as it turns out the cigar was sensational yeah. and the guy learned very quickly no he's uh, a good guy yeah, he, he good. makes good, good cigars he's a great guy good for him um, you've also making cigars for other people, other companies out yeah. there. Mickey Pegg, yeah. he was in, in industry for the longest time. Those that don't know him, uh, everybody knew who Mickey Pegg was. He gets out of the industry for a while, and next thing you know, he pops his head back in. And I'm getting back in. Here, try one of the cigars. I go, wow, it's really good. And he goes, Rocky made it for me. Is that a plan going forward to start making cigars for other well, people? Well, we, we have been making private labels for a long time, right? We do make them. I mean, we made one for you, Sindicato. Uh, those guys we made one for. We made for La Polina. Uh, we we'll make cigar for them, uh, certainly with Mickey Pegg. Um, and so we've been making private labels for quite a few people for okay. a while. Uh, so that has been a significant part of our business. Um, you know, people that want to talk about it and say we make it, they do. We allow them to market. Oh, some people, uh, you uh, make cigars for people who don't say it. They don't, oh. don't say it. Absolutely, oh, really? we do. What a waste. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, you know, so we do make some cigars. So I, I would say that about 10% of our portfolio is oh, private label. All right. You looking yeah. to do more? No, we're happy all with right. that. Yeah, okay. we're happy for to an do old that. Yeah, right <laughs> now. Oh, for, for you, yes. Well, for you, I, yes, because you're a marketing genius. I'd love are, to make I, one for you. I've got to uh, say, several people in the chat room have said Rocky Patel firecracker. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Hey, it, it could happen. It could happen. Right now, it's time to make sense about uh, tasting cigars, and that is brought to you by Cigar Sense. Cigar Sense offers a variety of resources to help cigar lovers get the most out of fine cigars. It's all about helping you respect your palate. From personalized cigar recommendations to cigar profiles based on sensory analysis, articles, and seminars. And now there's also a course, a cigar tasting course, which develops your sensory skills. You'll learn to identify aromas, tastes, and palate sensations. You'll learn to describe the flavors while appreciating what you're experiencing as you smoke. Visit Cigar Sense and start your sensory adventure 
with free membership. Here's today's Cigar Sense tip. So you guys know I play around on Cigar Sense every week, and at first I signed up for free, and I played around maybe six weeks learning the platform, and then I finally upgraded to the paid plan, and a whole new world opened up to me. You should try it out. For any listeners for this weekend who upgrade to a premium account and you use the code TCA30, you're going to receive 30% off of your Cigar Sense premium account. That's TCA30 as a promo code. You, you took six weeks to sign up. I did it after three days <laughs> or so. I got what I needed, and I jumped in both feet. You got you to gotta get in there, see what's going on. It's awesome. It's awesome. I respected my palate enough to sign up for Cigar Sense for free. Isn't it time that you respect yours? Okay, and Rocky, you're you're one of the few manufacturers, when you do describe cigars, you get into the cashews and nuts and things like that, and other people, they they laugh at us when we we end up talking about flavor notes. Tastes like tobacco. Yeah. Well, I don't get lead, but, you know, there's... uh, Yeah. But, uh, well, you know, uh, being a wine guy and and loving to cook, um, you know, and, and I'm not saying it's for everybody, but when you're actually tasting something... Uh, and, and you actually have the nose on the wine, there's certain sensory perceptions that get awakened. And so, you know, don't fight it. You don't have to look for stuff. But if you just sit back and close your eyes and have a vision of this different is like food that. elements yeah, or yeah, yeah. different things, that's really how you get your senses organized. And, and, and when you retro, when you take the smoke through your nose, so your mouth has about 14 different taste palettes. But your nose has up to 80. And that's why with wine, if you close your nose, you remember when you were young and you had to drink some medicine? Yeah, yeah. You close the nose. because Your parents made you do that because you really don't taste anything. You can literally take a shot of tequila, a shot of vodka, and a shot of whiskey, put it next to each other, and if you close your nose, you can barely tell the difference. It's all in the nose. And that's why when you retro a cigar, you're going to get so much more flavor, so many more defined characteristics. It's going to be a whole different experience than when you have it, when you just actually take it right through your mouth. Yeah, you, you're descriptive on your, on your, you know, I went to your website and looked, yeah. and you're very descriptive on the flavor notes and things like that, where a, a lot of the companies, they... they, they and now they, we have to be careful because yes. of the FDA, yes. right? So we used to have a lot more descriptive notes there, and the FDA, oh, well, that, now you're promoting cocoa or chocolate. or No, it has none of that. There's no additives. There's nothing added but clean water. It's just the perception of the smoke when you're smoking it, that you get in the flavor profile. And, and some it's of like, it's memories. So yeah. I'll smoke a cigar, and as I smoke the cigar, I remember as a kid, and I do it every once in a while still, you know what a fluff and nutter sandwich is? No, I don't. No, and most people don't unless they lived in New England. But it's a peanut butter sandwich, and then there's a, a thing, product called fluff. It's Marsh- marshmallow, marshmallow spread. Okay. It's marshmallow spread. And there it is. As I smoke the cigar, it brings me back as a kid having a fluff and nut sandwich because it's that marshmallow sweetness to it and the nuttiness. And there I have a marshmallow sandwich. Mm. And it makes the cigar so much enjoyable <laughs> and brings me back into memories. Sure. It, you know, it happens all the time as I do this. No, there is no nuts and there's no um, fluff that's in this. <laughs> I think but- t- tasting or smelling fluff is a sign that you're stroking out. So we're going to have to watch both sides of your I'll face. Go easy. I'll go easy. <laughs> <clears throat> so... Uh, Another thing you do is you're in other aspects of the business, which is great. Uh, I love when a, a rep comes here and he used to work in a cigar store and now he sells me cigars because he can kind of talk with me correctly and understand my side of whatever it is. And you got into the cigar bar business and you opened Burn and you're a retailer with it, within there, yeah, brick and mortar retailer, uh, also with the... Um, the adventure of going into a burn. So tell us a little about that. Well, you know, it, it started with being in Las Vegas, being in New York, being in Chicago. You go to these great cities and you finish a nice dinner and you want to have and enjoy a cigar with a cocktail in a nice environment. So I, I was so hurt by the fact that you'd go into these beautiful lounges and you could smoke a cigarette, but you weren't allowed to smoke a cigar or you couldn't smoke anything at all. And I said, why can't we create an environment where it's the coolest lounge in a particular city that's fun, beautifully designed, live music, elegant. You have people of all ages. Women can enjoy it. 
and you have the opportunity to smoke a cigar. It's not a cigar bar, it just happens to be the coolest lounge, and you can smoke a cigar, and you have an amazing HVAC system, so when you leave, your hair, your clothes don't smell like smoke, you have an amazing experience, but you can enjoy a cigar. I don't want to go to a hip-hop club with bottle service and boom, 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 mm. and you know, no. I want to be able to enjoy it, but have fun with great music, Music we grew up on, yeah. old rock and roll remixes, fun stuff. People can enjoy. They remember the songs. They can dance if they want to in a particular section, or they can sit back and chill and hang out with friends, or they can talk. And so that was another, another, another thing: burn. creating something as you created a cigar for your own palate. You created a lounge for your own, own sake. Yeah, I, somebody I mean, else is going to love yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, I basically built it because that's where I want to hang out. Okay. And it just happened to see that everybody else wants to hang out there too. So that's what we want to do. We want to go into the cities and be able to give people an opportunity to enjoy a cigar after they have a fine meal, relax and chill. What in does that moment. look like as far as getting your licenses? I mean, when people... When towns and states find out you're smoking indoors, yeah. they lose their mind. So is that a struggle? So it has been a struggle, right? So there's very few cities where we can capture that effect, right? Um, there's a lot of cities like Manhattan, for example. Uh, you can't open a new cigar lounge. Boston can't open a new cigar lounge. Uh, but in the places that we can, we're trying to develop that. So right now we're in Atlanta. We're in uh, Pittsburgh, uh, Oklahoma City, Naples, Florida. And then Indianapolis. And uh, my vision is hopefully uh, Dallas, Houston, Nashville. Um, you know, those are the three next targets on my, on my radar. Uh, and um, we're working on Boston. We, we're working on a way to get there. But <laughs> uh, I tried tough. to help you, but I know you God. have been trying. Promises been trying. and everything. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, we, you know, just the fact that you can go chill somewhere and have a great cocktail, a bourbon, a scotch, a wine, some music, some make it fun to enjoy a cigar. And that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, and and now you understand that aspect. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a tough business, do. but it is. Yeah, it is where everybody would do it. You know, yeah. and I know a lot of people jump in and, and they're not successful, and it takes a lot of hard work to, yeah. to to make it successful. I've been to only you you one in um, Florida. Yeah, and. Uh, Beautiful. I mean, right. the, the decor, everything is like you walk in and you, you're Well, the newer even, ones are even better. Really? I, Way, I've seen yeah, pictures. Yeah, I've seen yeah. pictures. Indianapolis is the, is the next ro that's road my trip. That's my favorite right yeah. now. That was the last one we created. Pittsburgh and India are probably my two favorite from a design perspective. All right. Get better um, and better as you go on. And they're big. They're 8,500 square feet, 7,500 square feet, so it's a big experience. But uh, COVID no, kill you? It hurt us. Uh, it hurt us for about a year. Yeah, yeah. especially in those the, the blue states. Uh, you know, they just uh, wrapped and closed everything yeah, down. And the rent so doesn't stop. No rent doesn't stop. Yeah, so and, that and, and big money, yeah. big money. It was it was rough. Uh, but you got through it, and business is better than ever. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and the cigars are better than ever. Uh, what are you getting out of this? Uh, uh, decade, Barry, what do you got? You nailed it with the marshmallow fluff, the <laughs> nuttiness, mm. but there's also a little bit of cocoa as well. Just a really so you're well going Nutella, really uh, <laughs> balanced, flavorful cigar. Yeah, yeah. Nor oh, Nutella fluff, a ah, fluff Nutella could be something. Could be something could be for, the, something for that little fluff company out of uh, with a Lynn, Massachusetts. I think is is fluff. Uh, how about you, Ed Sullivan? Is this up your, your wheelhouse? Well, once you mention fluff and nutters, I can't taste anything else. <laughs> but I love fluff and nutters, so it's go. a good thing. So I was right, Mr. Jonathan. I see what you did there. You got two people to back you up. So now, if I say something different, I'm an asshole. <laughs> well, you're an asshole anyway. Right. I'm going to go along with the fluff and nutter. That's fine. <laughs> and you know, you've never had it. So I you said don't nuttiness know. to begin with, anyway. So, but, but I think next time that um, Rocky comes up, I think we have a cigar dinner and it's fluff and nutter sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so last night was great. Um, not only did we have a cigar dinner, but then we had a little Q&A after, and I learned a lot of things myself. Uh, that was fun for me. I hope you had a good time. It was amazing. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was great to see a captive audience like that. Yeah. Uh, um, we had a lot of questions. Yeah. Uh, it was fun to engage. And there's nothing more uh, I enjoy than having people that want to absorb information and we can share uh, our passion and our craft uh, uh, with the consumers. And uh, it was a great, great time. All right, we're going to let you go, and we're going to go to break. But in one hour from now, we're going to bring in uh, the finalists. We're giving away a Rolex watch, 
And uh, this ought to be fun. And I'll see you again uh, at the 36th anniversary of yeah, Two Guys. Coming up in a month. Coming Looking up. Looking forward to yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go to break. When we come back, uh, we'll review the Rocky Patel 60. And this cigar is coming out in about a month. Very exciting, this cigar. We'll tell you all about it. And um, I'm going to reveal uh, something the Cigar Authority is coming out with uh, when we come back from break. Uh, we've been really cooking and working on this for quite a while. And um, it's, we're going to uh, give uh, all the proceeds to charity, and we'll tell you all about that, too. It's very exciting. Oh, if I know this I'm, project. This if is I'm cool. reading you right. This is cool. You're a genius. Yeah. I, when I got a call from Ed <laughs> saying, you got to get involved, I said, I'm, I mean, that that's so up my alley. This is so cool. I can't. I'm not going to tell you because he's going to tell you, but I can't wait to to. To look at what's coming and get involved and That's see it. what other people are doing. This is a, it's a great project. All right, so we'll get to that when we come back. We're live in the Toscano Cigar Soundstage, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Are you a member of the Cigar Authority Care Package? Well, if not, the time, my friend, is now. For just $24.99, you'll get four premium cigars delivered to your door each month. And we'll smoke each one of those cigars on the Cigar Authority podcast with you. I don't know if that's really a benefit. Sure it is. We will judge the construction, flavors, and review the cigars, and you can see how right or wrong we really are. You might be surprised. Four premium cigars delivered to you for $24.99, and you can quit any time, but you won't. The value is incredible. Want to take the Cigar Authority Care Package to the next level? Sign up or upgrade to the Cigar Authority Care Package Prime. For just $5 more, you get an extra cigar and usually something special. That's five cigars each month, all different. Find the Cigar Authority Care Package on thecigarauthority.com and sign up today. The Cigar Authority Care Package. Agent Room 4 Nicaragua Maestro. Named Cigar Aficionado's number one cigar of the year with a 96 rating, is a complex Nicaraguan puro carefully blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. As Cigar Aficionado described it, every puff is an overture of flavors that's at times heavy and rich with notes of dark chocolate and wood, and other times subtle and understated with hints of fine caramel and toasted almonds. Treat yourself to an aging Room 4 Nicaragua today. Certain general warning cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world, from exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of Cigar Science Basics, this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's Cigar Journal. Com. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th Anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th Anniversary as the Decade on Steroids. The 15th anniversary has also been named to Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish 
the three-peat, Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary, Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary, Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Justo and his father Julio Eiroa are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa Tobacco Farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. An Aladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba, and after one light, this old-school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, a family center company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. This crop to shop operation is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. This is Mr. Jonathan Carney with La Florida Minicana Cigars, and you're listening to the Cigar Authority. Not Mr. Anything. And we're back, and the Cigar Authority has some big news for us. We're about to be published. We'll get into that. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. Here it is. It, have you had this, Barry? I have not. This will be my first. This will be your first. It'll be yours. Uh, yeah. And we had this last night. And uh, do you know anything about it? I have all the details. Oh, you have the details. Okay, what do we have? Well, today's second <clears throat> cigar is the Rocky Patel 60, which happens to feature four bands. It's manufactured in Nicaragua by Rocky Patel. We're smoking the 5.5 by 50 Robusto. It features a San Andreas wrapper, Nicaraguan binder, and fillers. When the cigar comes out, it'll set you back sixteen nineteen, and at twoguyscigars.com, it'll go for two eighty seven ninety nine a box, which comes out to just fourteen forty per cigar, which is a savings of thirty six dollars or eleven percent off the box price. So once these are available, be sure to check out twoguyscigars.com. They're on. They they are on the website where you could say notify me when they're in. At this point, I believe so. They should be because we yeah. had to run an update to get it into the system, which would yes. So our event we did last night, we featured this as as, as the last cigar when we did the Q and A, and um, we let the people that were at the event, I don't want to say pre order, but um, get on the list, uh, notify me basically. Mm-hmm. Same thing as notify, um, and um, I think all but six people bought. Hmm. I mean, it was, it was just yeah. everybody was ended up buying after you smoked it. Um, so, you know, just a heads up of when it when it comes out, which is we're guessing three weeks to a month. Mm-hmm. I'd say a month, mm-hmm. knowing how um, Honduras they, works. Well, how things are being shipped right now. As Barry said, we have four different bands on this, and, and it's a robusto. So, um, foot band. You're going to take band three of them band. off in order to smoke it. Yeah. Well, actually, this fourth band is a band and a band. Right. So I think strictly yeah, it's three speaking, bands. it's three. But the way it's designed, yeah. it looks like four. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Let's give it a cut and light. It's a box press cigar. It, um, the outside wrapper was? San Andreas. San Andreas. Beautiful wrapper. It's beautiful looking. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo, the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax, and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. So I got a shout-out to my man, Joe, from Brooklyn. He, Joe from Brooklyn. Joe from Brooklyn. He came up. You had uh, already left. You had just left to go to uh, the other store with the Rolex. And uh, so he was a little bummed not to meet you. Okay. He says he's met Barry before. He wanted to meet Ed Sullivan, but... Alas, Ed Sullivan was not here. Hmm. He was stuck with me. You got to come on a Saturday. We're all here. He tried it with yeah. work. Wow, work. Mm. That work thing. All right. So, box pressed. Good draw, though. Yeah. Yep. Everything's draw tested there, too. Before the outside wrapper goes on, he says 100%. Draw you know the, the gummy bears that have that sour powder on them? Yeah, Sour Patch Kids. Yep. It, it, just the yellow one. If you bit off the head, 
So you, you don't have all that candy and you don't have a lot of tart, but there's a, a little bit of tart and a little bit of sweet going on in the cold. Leave drop. it to you to go for the head. Yeah. We're going to light our cigar yeah, today. Ed Sullivan the, says you got some sweet tart there. The, the tartness I agree with. I don't know about the gummy bears. We're going to light our cigar today with the Drone by Vertigo. The Drone by Vertigo features single action, two jets, both fueled by the patented Vertigo big-ass tank. On the side, you've got a fuel window on the bottom, a flip-out bullet punch, and easy adjustment, all for the low price of $19.99. That is the Drone by Vertigo. Remember the sweet tot, not sweet tots, sweet tots maybe, that weren't all that flavorful? Come in a long strip, the little... You mean Necco wafers? Nope, the sweet tots. Or the Smarties. Smarties, yeah. exactly. Smarties. Would get, which gets you to the same place. When I was about eight years old, my family took a trip to Canada to visit my mother's pen pal from did, when she was a did kid. Did they bring you? Yeah. All right. And we get to the lady's house, and they are a farm that farms rhubarb. And they said, you can eat as much rhubarb as you want. And I'm like, I can eat as much as I want because I love rhubarb. You can have rhubarb all day long and i said to my dad D are, we, are we serious here because i'm about to go do some damage on this crop you can have as much as you want i ate rhubarb for three hours i burnt out my taste buds rhubarb is like a root it's a it's like a celery stalk but it's very tart it's like a weed it's a weed so i burnt out my palate to the point where i would eat smarties and it tasted like flour there was no flavor whatsoever i was just eating little candy flower pellets it's gross yeah that's my smarty story all right it's a good story lasted uh, considerably quicker than his coin story but. that's true <laughs> all right so here's the big news and i and i waited till the the thing was complete before i let people know in case you never gonna, know yeah but uh here it goes the cigar authority cookbook we have put a cigar authority cookbook uh, and it's at the publisher right now. It should be out before the end of the year. They tell me. I think it's going to be sooner than that uh, mm -hmm. because I wasn't waiting for um, the cover design, which is a right. big thing. I just did it myself. So if it doesn't look all that great, the cover, <laughs> I did it. Uh, it's 120-plus pages. Uh, the Cigar Authority panel, all of us have done a um, recipe in there. Uh, recipe and a photograph of the recipe, uh, along with the pairings and everything that goes along with it. Um, we brought in uh, everybody who's ever had anything to do with the Cigar Authority. That includes Tommy Grella, Gentleman Chuck Morrison, even Old Fart Freddy. Mm. Uh, any, uh, Old Fart Freddy has a very elaborate recipe. His <laughs> recipe is a winner. <laughs> yes, it's a winner. Um, guys and girls of the Ash Holes. Uh, are in it. Um, some of our biggest fans, including Rudy from Canada. Oh, nice. Uh, is in there. You're going to be surprised who, who some of these people are that um, we asked to uh, participate, uh, most of which did. Uh, we had some people that um, said, I'm not going to do it. So, uh, Well, some people that don't cook, yeah. for example. It's, yeah. it's not their thing. Uh, cigar manufacturers from around the world, including Rocky Patel and some of the biggest names in the cigar industry participated. They, they thought it was interesting. Next week's guest, Michael Cappellini, mm -hmm. um, he's, he's going to be in there. Athletes um, that are, are into cigars, like Carl Malone, mm. uh, is in on it. Um, family, uh, my daughter, my mother, giving out uh, a secret recipe she never told anyone. Really? And now it's in print. It's in print. She said, okay, oh. I'm going to give it up. Uh, and other people giving away their, their family secrets. Well, I gave away one of my secrets. Yeah. Um, Was it fried chicken? <laughs> <laughs> a cutlet or a fried chicken? Let's not get into that. It's the same thing. Okay. Uh, so if you're a cigar geek, uh, there's plenty of surprises for you in this cookbook. And the cookbook pairs uh, with food, drinks, desserts, and cigars on every single one of them. Uh, of what's the perfect pairing to go mm -hmm. along with that? Some of them the manufacturers supplied on their own. If they didn't, we, we decided ourselves uh, what to do. And uh, so um, somebody had reached out to me for a golf tournament 
do you want to uh, play in this golf tournament? And I said, no, I don't golf, blah, 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 um, but I have an idea for you. Come on down. Let's have a cigar and talk. And um, it's Ernie Cotomash, a longtime customer of ours since, my God, it's got to be more than 30 years. Uh, he came down, and he, um, he retired after 50 years from Webb. And, um, FW Webb, FW yeah. Webb, and... Um, said that he is now working with this company called Ironstone Farms in their Andover, in Andover Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And I, I never heard of it, but um, it's a horse farm that helps children with special needs to learn and walk and talk. Um, kids that couldn't even speak before autism. Yeah, he um, told me a story about one young man that never uttered a word and he, walked up to a horse. Started, and started talk talking to the horse. Yeah, so crazy things have happened there. Uh, veterans who experience trauma, um, they have a house they're building there with that'll house 30 veterans that'll stay there for three months at a time, and then they switch it out. Uh, teens at risk, young adults with special needs can benefit from uh, life learning skills, and elderly people with uh, memory issues. So they're helping lots of people. So they, you could you could live there. I could go months. there. I could go there. A uh, hundred percent of the profit goes to them. There is no. It's just all going directly there. I love charities like that. That you know some of these things. Unfortunately, it's ten, twelve percent of what you donate actually go to what it is. This is a hundred percent of it. So uh, no more information yet. Waiting for the book to be published. When it is, we'll tell you how how it can be available to you. And uh, I like that it's a local business. I mean, it's it's affecting our community here locally. Mm. So uh, it'll be out there, and um, yeah, I can't, can't wait for it. Uh, I finished up the last final things today, and it's off and running. Nice. This is it. So we'll see how it goes. So uh, that's it. It's time to take a peek into the asylum right now from our friends at Asylum Cigars. It's time for news from the insane asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true. Or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars. Take no prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4 inches by 44 to the absolutely insane 8 inch by 80. Asylum Cigars. <laughs> <laughs> a man from Mr. Jonathan's favorite city, Bangkok, has suffered a permanently disfigured member after he got it stuck in a padlock for two weeks. The man, 38, clamped the metal device around the base of his genitalia in a bizarre sex act, but then he lost the key, and after two weeks, it became infected, and he was forced to seek medical attention. After two weeks. Yeah. You wait two weeks to have this checked out. Two seconds after I'm done, <laughs> I'm going to get some bolt cutters at the hardware store. According to the man's mother, he's a very private person that doesn't have a girlfriend. Shocker. And she also added he likes to I don't stick think his they would. I don't think they were doing the shocker. And uh, she also added he likes to stick his penis through small holes. I guess you could say he his took the lock. Said. Yes. His mother said. I guess you could say he took the lockdown to a whole nother level, and that's not only insane, it's asylum and a true story. How do you find it? How do these things come in? <laughs> well, it was stuck do, in the lock. Do people send this information to you? Or do you, you no, I, you know, I, I like, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't want to look at his browser history. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> next week, Michael Capellini from Toscano is coming in and joining us. Um, the following week, um, Phil Zangi that uh, Rocky yeah. bring up. That was uh, Rocky's original partner with Indian Modus, Indian Tobacco. It's now Indian Motorcycle Company. Uh, apparently, he did get the licensing <laughs> on there. Got that uh, worked out. Uh, Phil is coming up, uh, and we'll join him. And the following week, Akil from Regis Cigars. Nice. Uh, if you don't know who he is, a young man in the cigar industry, we're going to talk a little about him and uh, up-and-comers in the cigar industry on the after show today. So uh, one after the other, uh, we have... Uh, Manufacturer after manufacturer coming in. The weather's fine up here, and uh, we're going to grab them while we can and bring these folks in. But we are smoking the Rocky Patel 60, 60 years, or Rocky Patel 60? I think it's the Rocky Patel 60. 60. Just 60, because he turned 60 years old. Um, the interesting thing of this, I was bringing this to the attention of people last night that were smoking it. Rocky tells us that he rolls a cigar, then he puts him in a vault, for two years after the cigar is rolled. I've heard this 
bullshit before, but it's not bullshit in this case because if you look at, well, you're not smoking the cigar, but we are. The you carbon at, line. Yeah, look at the combustion line where the ash meets the wrapper of it, and usually there's a little line that's on there. Sometimes it's a big sooty line. Sometimes it's smaller. In this case, it is almost, it's almost non-existent. non-existent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens with it after the cigar sits a long time. Do it to a cigar you have yourself in your humidor and just age it for a couple of years and then go back to that cigar and you'll notice that carbon line. First off, has to start with the right ingredients, well-aged tobacco to begin with. Uh, assuming you have a great cigar that you love, you do that and you'll watch that carbon line go down and down and down. So uh, uh, I just I got one more shout out here. Uh, Manuel wrote to me through the Contact Us page that we had a death in the family in he did. Merced, California. The uh, shop owner of Cigar Monkey, his name's Mike, who was a huge fan of the show, wrote in many times. Uh, He passed away, and on August 14th, his customers and friends will have a celebration of life at his shop, and uh, it'll likely be after listening to the show. His wife, Janet, needs our prayers, and I'd love if you guys could give a shout-out to Janet and the Cigar Monkey community, Uh, and that's uh, what I'm doing. Okay. Mm. Uh, condolences. Cigar Monkey. Is the name of the Cigar store? Cigar Monkey is the, the name of the store. And where is it? In Merced, California. Merced, California. Condolences to the family and friends of him. And uh, nev- never got to meet him, but um, fan of the show. Yeah, he wrote into the show yeah. a few times. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right. It's time for the poll question of the week. Yep. The question of the week is brought to you by Victor Sinclair Cigars. Victor Sinclair Cigars, the cigars you won't question. And last week was a follow-up uh, to... Uh, country of tobacco origin that you like, the factory Mm -hmm. origin. And it spurred a conversation between Dave and I. And the question we asked is, are you loyal to a set of brands or manufacturers, or do you smoke everything? And to my surprise, 80% of the people said they smoke everything, and only 20% are loyal to a specific brand. I would guess on our audience, because if they're... If you're, if you're loyal to a specific brand, why listen to the Cigar Authority and learn about different brands if you're going to stay loyal to it? And I'd say the same goes for even the audience well, just that we you're, you're in the care package. You're going to be smoking four different cigars or well, five if you're in prime. Unfortunately, everybody that listens to the show is not in the care package. Why are you not in the care package? I have no idea because we lose money doing it. Hurt me. Hurt me. <laughs> Go on there and actually sign up. Have your family sign up. And this week we have another question up. If you go to the CigarAuthority.com, you can vote for it. You'll see the graphic for the Versus segment. And usually we don't share bullshit. what that question it's a is. Bullshit question. But this, this week we, we look to put an end to Jonathan saying a chicken cutlet is fried chicken. Yeah. Uh, you can weigh in with your vote, and we'll share that next week. Do the right thing, people. Do the right thing. Do your honest guess. Don't just try to hurt Mr. Jonathan. If you believe that my chicken people, cutlet is fried chicken. I need my people to vote the right way. Be, All just chicken be, that is fried is fried chicken. That would be your person. You need your person. Yeah. Well, I think Pam has already voted for me. So right. we're set there. Are you on his side? A chicken cutlet is fried chicken? I talked with you last week. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you'd come to your senses. <laughs> Uh, see, uh, she's, see, on, she's she's against me. Yep. Okay, you good. managed to turn one of my people against me <laughs> again. And before you go on there, just think of the um, air fryer that is not fried either. Just because the word "fried" is in there, right. it is not fried. Yeah, but if, if you, you actually to- fry it. It's fried. If you went to a restaurant and you ordered fried chicken and they brought you out chicken parmesan, you would lose your mind. So therefore, it is not fried chicken. I wouldn't lose my mind. I would eat it graciously and love it. No, they, you can't do that kind of stuff. What do you think? Now, be serious. Rocky went downstairs. He can't hear us. He ain't going to listen to the show after. <laughs> hey, he doesn't even know what was advertised yeah, on the right, show. Right. <laughs> it's good. Think? It's real good. You, now, we had it last night, yep. and we talked about it actually in the parking lot after how good it was. What do you guys think? You're smoking it for the first time. You're early on. Early right? on. Let's, let's have an early on thought of what you think of the cigar. You know, for me, it's not quite up to my strength, normal profile. Maybe that's why I love it so much. I, I, I imagine you would, yeah. But I think this may be the best thing Rocky's ever put out. That's what I said. That's what he says, too. 
All right. Uh, he said, I, I can't do any better. This is it. I'm going <laughs> to give it about a six out of 10 on the strength profile. Yeah. See, I was thinking five. I think it's solid medium. Yeah. I'm going to go. I, I could be an asshole and go to seven, but, but I'll, I'll say six <laughs> is right. But see, a lot of times with A little this, more than medium. A lot of times with the San Andreas wrapper, they're blending things to be stronger than you would like, Dave. So this is a good opportunity. This thing might have been an eight when he made it two years ago. Yeah, sure. And it, and it went down to a six. That went, I don't know. It takes the sharp edges off it. What I like about it is a lot of times San Andreas is, is, is blended to be strong, and it takes away... It makes everybody think San Andreas is a strong rapper. Yeah. This showcases the flavor profiles of San Andreas while not overpowering it with strength. And it's got enough age on it where you can't pick out just one. The second I start wanting to say cinnamon, there's also some coffee that kind of filters in there. I got the coffee. And then the right when I'm like, okay, it's definitely coffee, uh, a little chocolate note, kind of. It's very, very transitional, and the flavors are muted because of the age. Velvety. I also Flames. got a, a very distinct sunflower seed on, on mine. Really? Like, you know, putting, <laughs> really? The, putting the shell in your mouth, putting the shell to get the seed. I'm getting that sunflower taste. Yeah. So it's salty. Unsalted. You can why get unsalted you eat, from. Why would you eat unsalted sunflower seeds? The whole thing is the salt. It's better for you. Is it? Yes. Be berry. Pumpkin seeds have to be salted. Pumpkin seeds. Do you eat pumpkin seeds? I haven't in a long time. Yeah. And nowadays, Barry eats like a bird. And they don't have salted mm -hmm. sunflower seeds. Still coming off, Barry? Yeah, 130 right now. Wow. Yeah, since I switched to Mediterranean. 20 more pounds. We, we got to, yeah. we're going out to dinner. I guess we're going for Mediterranean. Yeah. Dave doesn't eat that shit. No, you don't no. even know what that is, right? Yeah, I won't order red meat. I, I pretty much stop eating red meat for health reasons, so. Oh, but. So, so, so if we, we go to Kowloon's, you'll get the chicken fingers, which are fried. <laughs> I'll cheat for Kowloon's because there's a rumor that they're shutting down. There is. It's yeah. a true rumor. It's a true rumor. Okay, uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we've got three emails to get to and a prize to give away and lots more. We're live in the Toscano Cigar Soundstage, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Drew Estate is commemorating 10 years of Undercrown with the global release of Undercrown 10, a bold new ultra-premium addition to Undercrown's current premium lineup of Maduro, Shade, and Sungrown Expressions. To celebrate the brand's anniversary in 2021, Drew Estate is getting all decked out. A tagline that denotes Undercrown 10's elegant packaging and reinforces the pride of Undercrown's 10 years of excellence. The new sophisticated packaging is surpassed only by Undercrown 10's complex, rich, and bold blend of ultra-premium aged tobaccos that include the highest priming of Mexican San Andreas dark wrapper, the very finest broadleaf binder from the Connecticut River Valley, and a tripper blend of select and rare Nicaraguan tobaccos. Pick up an Undercrown 10 today. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican cigar manufacturing. Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Anduyo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma, and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameron binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua, and Anduyo. Available at top retailers like twoguyscigars.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar & Company. Experience the rich tradition of the legendary H. Upman brand with the latest addition to their iconic 1844 line. The H. Upman 1844 Añejo uses a rich, well-balanced blend of Nicaraguan, Honduran, and Dominican tobaccos and an extra-aged wrapper that offers a deep aroma with a bold finish. The H. Upman 1844 Añejo is sure to please adult smokers looking for a delicious, 
handmade premium smoke that is aged to perfection. Surgeon General warning, cigar smoking can cause cancers of the mouth and throat even if you do not inhale. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake, Jose Dominguez. Not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donut. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more, it's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. Sono Michael Cappellini dal Toscano Cigars e stai ascoltando al Cigar Authority sul United Podcast Network. Benvenuti a tutti voi. And we'll have Michael Cappellini here next week. He usually brings food with him. Barry can't eat any of it. I can have some of the cheeses. Yeah? yeah. Cheeses okay. Certain cheeses, hard cheeses. Ah, oh, okay, hard cheeses. Sounds like a, a word by itself, hard cheeses. Like Parmesan, Asiago, can't have anything processed, so no American cheese or anything provolone. Nothing American. Correct. Can't have American. You can't have cheese in a can. <laughs> Giggity. No cheese whiz? <laughs> no whiz. All right, we're back. We're smoking the Rocky Patel 60. It is burning perfect. It is, it is tasting beautiful. This is a awesome cigar. It's very good. And I'm starting to get some pepper notes at the halfway mark. I will go on record and say this is the best thing he ever made. Yeah. I was a little concerned about the price, sixteen nineteen for a single, but to me it's worth the price of admission. Yeah, it's mm. performing very well. We got an hour out of this. We smoked the same size, right? We smoked the Toro last night. Oh, smoked night. the Toro. We got a full hour out of it. Uh, Easily. Yeah. So, uh, all right, we got emails to get to and a prize to give away. All right, this uh, week's Email is brought to you by Monte Cristo, and this week's prize is a pen, a set of rocks glasses, a scarf, and it's not a scarf, it's a pocket square. Pocket square. Same thing, <laughs> uh, and a lapel pin. There we go. Now there's a little trick with the the little pocket square. You put the pocket square in, and you jam the lapel pin through the pocket, and you hold the pocket square there with the pin, so it doesn't move around. What if you sneeze and you need to pull it out? I don't pull out. The following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of the CigarAuthority.com, and the tagline really almost made this my vote. But it didn't. Diarrhea of the Mouth Champion. Mr. J, I've been listening to the show for many years, not willing to say how many, as this may hurt my credibility in some circles. I listen for three main reasons. First, Dave's cigar and business knowledge. Second, Mr. J's solid libertarian rhetoric. And finally... I've had an ongoing debate with myself. Who talks out of their ass more? Me. The man with the not sweet tipped, sweet tipped cigars or Barron's? After the whiskey show, I think I can finally declare a winner. Barry's asinine statement that you shouldn't add water to whiskey put him over the top, especially coming from the supposed liquor authority. Adding a small amount of water to whiskey bonds it with some of the alcohol, lets the nuanced flavors come through, and if that's not enough, you're telling people like Booker no and many other actual whiskey authorities that they're doing it wrong. Let the backtracking and doublespeak begin. Congratulations on your title, Barry. Thank Scar you. Authority, Diarrhea of the Mouth Champion. Keep up the good work. There's your shit sandwich for the week. Sign Nate. If you want to weaken the proof of the alcohol, drink lower proof. You also open up some of the subtleties. I get that. I just don't believe it. You know? I've had you scotches, never do it. Never do it. I've had scotches go from very sweet to very peppery 
in one capful and vice versa. It's also why I don't put any condiments on stuff that comes out of a chef's kitchen. He made it that way for a reason. You're not a condiment guy. No. Burger? No. If the chef wanted to add something to it, he would have added to it at the time of production. I'm kind of with Barry on the burger. I will season it with a little truffle salt right at the end as it's resting. You have plain burger. Plain burger. Really? Mm. Now you're missing all the stuff to a ketchup mustard combination. Oh, get the. <laughs> it should in my be, mind, it should it's be a li- flavor. Actually. If the liquor producer wanted to open up with water, he would put a little bit in at the time of bottling. They choose not to. They so do. That's the way. They do. They don't add extra to it. What's extra? A cap full is adding to it. That's not the way it came out of the factory. I'm going to take it the way. You know, so I'm not going to add ketchup to a cigar. No, but you add fire, you jackass. <laughs> What's the after show topic this week? The after show, we're going to talk about who's the next up and comers in the air. So uh, how this stemmed out is I was talking to Rocky, and um, I remember his first trade show and they had a they a bunch of them got together these newcomers and they rented a suite and they said oh come up and have a drink after the show so f- right from the show floor we went upstairs and there was a suite there and you grab a cigar and they got a drink for you and there was Rocky Patel and there was Padrone and there Did were, anybody allow you to put a cap full of water in your drink if you They allowed to, they, allowed they allowed you to okay. do whatever you Just want making sure. <laughs> and there was these these guys in there, and I don't know who the guy is I was sitting with. And again, this is early 90s, maybe 95. And um, I look around, and these guys were all friendly with each other, and they were all in their 30s, young, younger guys. And I was myself. And I said, you know something? This is it right here. Take a look at these guys that are here. These are the up-and-comers, and this is what the cigar industry is going to look like years from now. And here it is years from now. If you notice the guys, the big names in the cigar industries, Nick Perdomo, Rocky Patel, George Padron, yeah. you know, one after the other, they're all about the same age. These were them then. Now we look at it, here we are 25, 30 years later, and I'm looking at it again and saying, okay, you know, hypothetically, what's this group look like? And are these the up-and-comers? And, and uh, you, you got on very late. We talked about it a little on Clubhouse. I may or may not have fallen asleep. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it's pretty hard to try to figure out who it is. So what the industry needs is some up-and-comers. Some new blood. So is what I, is what I came from. But we'll get into that in the after show. But we have uh, two more mailbags to get to. For the f- the following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com, and the subject line is, For the Love of God. Good day, gentlemen, and Mr. Jonathan. I think you see that I like this guy already. I have to say that I found you all about two years ago and have been a faithful listener ever since. You actually make me look forward to my Monday morning drive. But I wanted to reach through the radio and choke you, listening radio. to you chew the first half of the jerky <laughs> show. However... Yes. Mr. J would enjoy that, so I digress. That's Barry, by the way, for anyone who wants to choke anyone. Yeah. So, so you remember, Jonathan, you were there at the beginning when, when Tommy Grella was a co-host with us, and we used to take a break uh, after, right after the break, and we would have food, and he would say what kind of food he brought with us, and we chewed every single show. <laughs> yeah, and you know how popular we were back yes. then, and if you'd like to go down. There were three people during the Rocky Patel event that pulled me aside three separate people and said, for the love of God, stop chewing on the show. And mm. I said it to you, and you two, Jack Whistles, just kept going, all that bullshit. That was the part of the show. Though. No, <laughs> no one likes it. Uh, Mr. J would enjoy that, so I digress. That's the choking. Uh, I would rather yeah. listen to stories of coins and ribbons or perhaps do deep knee squats and a right. cucumber patch. All right, so he's been <laughs> before I for a while. to that first half again. However, I pushed through and thoroughly enjoyed the episode when Dave wasn't smacking his lips. At least he knows the culprit. I told you to stop doing it. You said, I can't taste it unless I do this. You could move the microphone. You could cover it. There's a host of things you can do. All right, all right. I know. (laughs) Blah, blah, blah. He's done. (laughs) Yeah, you're not even going to go any further. He's fine. He made his point. We don't need to belabor it. Hmm. I think you've seen the error of your ways. 
So that is, for the love of God, stop smacking your lips. and You don't like that, but... It's, See, I would have called that email the cucumber patch. It, it, <laughs> it, it may be constructive criticism, so I'm going to take that positively. Yeah. Because he has been listening for a long time. He said a lot of things in there that uh, were good. So here's the third and last, and this is your favorite. All right. So this is Kevin writing through the Contact Us page, and he spells ketchup two different ways. I don't like either of them. But Mr. Jonathan, your summarily dismissive attitude once summarily, again. Summarily. Summarily. Summarily dismissive attitude once again fell off the rails last week when you declared that David was out of his freaking mind because he accepts the fact that since every single ingredient for ketchup is in a recipe, that recipe, in fact, includes ketchup. David is spot on. You, on the other hand, have unnecessarily drawn some sort of purest line in the sand by requiring that nothing goes into the mix is allowed to be pre-mixed before it is mixed. What? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yep. 70 <laughs> That's right. That's 70, exactly right. 70% of all barbecue restaurants buy Cattleman's barbecue base by the gallon off the shelf and then turn it into their own creation with their personal trade secrets. You mean that the barbecue restaurant didn't start with a real tomato? They must be out of their freaking minds. Yeah. He, he, What's next, Mr. J? The coffee isn't acceptable if we don't add precisely two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen to the coffee grounds? Heaven forbid somebody premix those two. <laughs> Learn to accept and admit when you're wrong, when presented with a correct version of the obvious, and you will find yourself less often on the Maduro side of life. Kevin. Hmm. Kevin got you right. Your mother brought you up wrong is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something happened to you when you were young. Summarily dismissive some, attitude Some got of these me. things, because he's so strong on these type mm -hmm. of things. That he'll. I, I've sat. I don't the, like ketchup. I've sat at a table with him, and he sits down, and the ketchup bottle is to the right of him where he's sitting, and he get gets the ketchup bottle, he moves it away from him. Right. Something happened. Something happened. Don't agree with that, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> I deduct two points off your overall score. There's something. I just don't like ketchup. It's stronger than that. No, it's I just stronger. don't like it. If it says ketchup, ketchup, ketchup raped you or something. One day. <laughs> <laughs> Something happened. Something pick a winner. I pick Kevin. The well, Cuba, uh, cucumber patch was the greatest line ever written yeah. in an email, but I'm going with number three. Yeah, I'm tempted by two. That cucumber patch was great, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick with number three. because All right, he all right. It. It's a shutout, so three. I'm going to send this email on over to Barron's. Kevin, shit on me anytime, buddy. All right. Are we go Try not to be <laughs> summarily dismissive of your emails. Cigar's great. Not kidding. Rocky Patel 60. I can't wait. I wish we had it so people would be buying it right now, but we don't even have it. Um, but it's time to Ask the Dawn by Don Raphael. What are we going to do here? No, we're not playing that shit. It's we time got, to Ask got, the got, Dawn. Got, brought to you by Don Raphael Cigars. We've got to Raphael redo it. We've got to do it. Yeah. Don we, Raphael Cigars. Maybe somebody will send it in. Somebody will do it. So play it so they can hear the oh, word. No, no, yeah, no. Don't time. play it. One send time. it in through the speak pipe. It's time. To ask the dawn. Somebody can do this. Somebody why else. do I deserve this? I could be done by now. Brought to you by Don Raphael Cigars. When, when did I ever refuse an accommodation? Don Raphael Cigars are premium cigars. Premium. And as a reasonable man, I'm willing to do whatever was necessary to find a peaceful solution to his problem. Mellow and smooth. You can act like a man. What's the matter with you? Built for every man's everyday enjoyment. Don Raphael Cigar. If the voice was right, I think it would be good. Right. No, no there's nothing good about that at all. For starters, it's way too long for a bit. 30 seconds. That's what you need. Okay. All right. This week's uh, Ask the Don question is, when is it okay to use a V cutter over a straight cutter? Because you complain you all it. the time. You, you complain it. all the time about V cutters and bullet punches and that straight cuts the way to go. Yep. Uh, but there is an appropriate time. And that's when you and your buddy, and in our case, Trevor, that works in the Salem store, he and I will often smoke the same cigar at the same time. Now, uh, we put cigars down and we're, we were always asking, which one's mine, which one's yours, trying to burp, smoke rip the wrapper. Smoke cigars and stop smoking Aladino all the time. No, you can't do that. So... I use the V-cutter when I'm in the store. It's the only time I use it. If he and I are smoking the same thing, I cut mine with a V-cutter. He doesn't even have a V-cutter, so now I know 
which one's mine. So if you need to differentiate your cigar, you got to make sure you use a deep V so that you don't yeah, change the, the airflow. Yeah, the V is good. You've, you've done it to my cigar. You've cut it for me before you hand me something. I'm like, oh, V got it. And it's, it's, it is okay. It's fine. It's Why not just remove the band on one of them? <laughs> I'm sorry. Is that too easy? Stop talking out of your ass. <laughs> Talk Go back to sleep. <laughs> All right, so that's Ask the Dawn. All right, uh, let's get to the classic three-way because i got a Rolex to give away. It's time for This Day in Classic History, brought to you by Classic Cigars. Classic Cigars are now the most affordable cigar brand in America. With prices as low as $1.50, this cigar has something for everyone. The Classic Connecticut is light and smooth. The Classic Maduro is bold, but never overpowering. The classic Cameroon sits somewhere in between with hints of sweetness. And the classic Cuban is a real knockoff of the taste and flavors from old-time Havanas. Classic cigars are sold in cost-saving bundles of 20 and sold in five great sizes, ranging from $1.50 to $2.25 per cigar, which makes classic the most affordable premium handmade cigar in America. Classic cigars. Ed Sullivan is our champion. I have four questions. One tiebreaker. It's going to you. Today is August 14th. Happy birthday to Halle Berry. Halle Berry, American actress. She was in the X-Men, The Last Stand, Monster Ball. She was born in Cleveland, Ohio today. What year was that? Everybody write it down. Write it down. <sighs> I don't know. Do I have to play? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, 1980. 1980. 1972. 72. 69. 69. Everybody is over. Much uh, over. 66. She's still hot enough uh, to light your cigar on her hind she's quarters. She's old. She's old. When's the last time you saw her? Uh, I don't know. Eight. Ten years ago? Don't Monsters look at my ball. browser history. I w uh, I'm not going to mention the person who may be listening uh, who they are, but <laughs> I went to get them a cup of coffee once, and I said... Uh, you, you want cream? You want a Halle Berry? <laughs> That's how he wanted his coffee, her mm -hmm. skin tone. And I had to think, is that a lot of cream? Or is it a little cream? <laughs> or how is that? It, it's, a, it's a little more cream than you would think, <laughs> as it goes. Um, over to you, Mr. Jonathan. Steve Martin, American comedian, banjo player, uh, author and actor, Parenthood, The Jerk, Roxanne. You know Steve Martin. He was born in Waco, Texas today. What Keep that man away from my cocaine. 1949. That was a quote from Roxanne, by uh, the way. 42. 42. I don't know. Uh, 1947. 47. It's 45, so Barry gets the point. Didn't he say 42? Yeah. So I get the point. No, you said 40, 49. Yeah. yeah. 47. You don't get anything. I thought Barry said 42. 42. It's 45. Yeah, it wasn't over. Without going over. You know how this game works. Without going fair. over. He's very confused. <clears throat> uh, number three goes to Barry. Irving Magic Johnson, American basketball player, Hall of Fame, point guard, uh, five-time NBA champion, three-time NBA finals. Uh, he was MVP uh, for the Olympic gold. Born in Michigan today. Magic Johnson. 1958. 58. 19. 62. 62. 1955 for two 55. points. Barry gets it. He says 58. It's 59. We got two points for Barry. Barry for, knows stuff. For, for some reason, I only put one name on here. Barry. I didn't put <laughs> the three names. I just put really? Barry. I didn't put anybody you knew else. He would win. That nobody else would it's get a, a point. Out? So he emailed Barry the answers. Yeah. No, I did not. But I figured Barry was going to sweep for whatever reason. But. We got a shot here that Jonathan is going to get the next point. Oh, boy. What is it? Some sort of... Liberace's birthday? Thing. Sonny and Cher. I Got You, Babe. Hits number one today. What year? Ed Sullivan could have a shot at this one. Sonny and Cher. I Got You, Babe. Hits number one today. What year was that? 1965. 65. 1958. 58. I'll be over 72. 72, you're very over. Somebody has two points, Ed Sullivan. We have a tie. Yeah. And I have a tiebreaker. So, Ed Sullivan, I got to put your name down there. It's two for you. One question to go. Jonathan Goose Egg, nothing for you. 
Over Thanks. to you. John Doc Holliday. Doc Holliday, American dentist, gambler, gunfighter. He was a gunfighter at the OK Corral. He was born in Griffin, Georgia today. Doc Holliday, what year? 1845. 1845. 1862. 1862. 1840. 40. For the first time ever. It's a tie. Oh, no, it's not. Jonathan said 1845. He gets a point, but we do have a tie. So Ed Sullivan will keep the racket because nobody beat you. Nobody beat you, so you are the champion. Yay. I thought Jonathan had two points for a second. No. It would have been a three-way tie. Then what happens? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Never happened. Okay. That's it. Final decision here on the Rocky Patel 60. Oh, yeah. It's going into my rotation when and if we have them. Hands down, I'll smoke it again. Absolutely. Very rich, very yeah. flavorful, very different than the Rocky part, uh, portfolio. Definitely his best cigar to date. Best cigar. This is something. This is something. And uh, sold a whole bunch of them yesterday. We didn't even have the cigars in. And you're looking at a, a three hundred dollar box of cigars anyway. Three fifty, maybe. They're up there. They're up there, but really good. Okay. I want to uh, end the show now because we gotta clean up and we gotta give away this Rolex. So uh, next week Michael Capolina from Toscano is back with us. He's got a new Toscano we're gonna uh, try. And a very, very interesting event that he's going to plan with us. And we'll tell you all about that Is it event. the fried chicken event? It is not a fried chicken event. Chicken has nothing to do with it. We'll talk about that. Also, we're trying to come up with events and stuff, different stuff. And um, came up with something really unique. Very Italian. Hmm. You wouldn't figure that. But the very Italian thing. We'll talk about that more. Until then, you've been listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And you may have learned something today which makes you The Cigar Authority. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.